Hello everyone, and welcome to another installment of Tanner's Jose Canseco Baseball Card Collection. This is part three, um, and yeah, so I wanted to clarify something real quick. Just First of all, this is like an awesome oversized Optimus Prime. I actually got the toy version um, of it. This is the tune version, um, and it is massive. It's actually about to fall over. I brought this downstairs because I'm switching it out for a display. I was like, while I'm down here, I might as well do another video. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I guess I'll, I'll leave him there. Um, yeah, why not? He's going to fall at some point, but we're not talking about Optimus Prime. We are talking about Jose Canseco baseball cards. So what we're doing, you guys, like number, there's a couple of reasons why I'm doing these videos. Number one, it just gives me an excuse to dive into the box. Uh, to I've got two boxes uh, like this that just have got great stuff. Uh, and the other reason is because I am constantly uh, contacted by other collectors and they want to see what's out there. And so I'm trying to give you uh, an idea as if like these cards themselves were in your hand and see if you really wanted something like this, uh, like certain cards like this or whatever. So, uh, so that way you can kind of fill out your want list and say, okay, that card is the card that I want to go after. But anyways, without further ado, we're not going to have any more yakety yak here. Let's just, let's just get in it. So um these are basically my non top 25 cards uh so basically everything else i have i've got some base scattered here and there i don't show that but um but i've got some massive heavy hitters in here there's a number of them that probably could be interchangeable with some top 25s i'm still thinking about maybe i'll do a top 25 video when all said and done but in any event um because i feel like i should show those also but Anyways, we're going to start off with like a, a biggie. This is a uh, Super Fractor, um, one of one, obviously. Uh, and it's the 1984 top style. Um, I think they did this one like back in, oh, 2019. Holy smokes. This is like five years old now, um, which is wild to me. Uh, love the 84 uh, design. And, you know, obviously, Jose was not in the actual 84 you know, set because he didn't come along to the majors for you know, another couple more years. Uh, but I've got good memories, like I'm sure you do too, of the 84 top set, the original. Um, I remember finding a vending case on Craigslist a number of years ago for I think like 50 bucks or so. And I actually cracked the entire case and had like a huge uh, cache of like, uh, of uh, Dom Mattingly's and Daryl Strawberries, which is cool. So. All right, sorry, I had to pause this. I actually got a message from somebody that I'm uh, trying to do a deal with on another Conseco card. So uh, I saw his his name pop up and I paused this and, and messaged him. So the next one is, I believe this is 2003 Topps Tribute um, Gold. There's a silver version as well. It's really beautiful also. Uh, my uh, buddy John, so shout out to John out there. I think he's got both of these and he asked his family and they said they actually like the silver one better as far as looks go and uh yeah they might be right um maybe the silver one does look best i, I think i like the gold one uh i think how I, I like how it looks better but then again if the silver were out of 25 and this were unnumbered would i think the same i don't know good question either way this card is really cool i love it i don't see too many of them on card autograph and this by the way is like the year after he retired if i remember correctly so yeah 2003 beautiful beautiful card uh, this one is a 2004 Absolute Memorabilia Tools of the Trade. I don't normally do multiples of the same type of card, however. Uh, I do have like one or two other similar cards to this, but and they've got different variations, right, of course. But the neat thing is, is I, if I remember correctly, I think this is part of, this says Game Worn Prime Jersey, uh, same with this here, and then a Game Used Bat. Uh, this is numbered out five, by the way. Uh, so it's five of five. And uh, it is a really neat card. Like, I just love this setup. I actually did a custom, uh, I called it the Kinseiko Absolute Ultimate uh, Tools of the Trade, where I had nine pieces, and it's a jumbo piece. But in any event, the thing that makes this really special is not only this, which I think it's in a way jersey, part of the, part of the nameplate, but also has a piece of the sleeve logo patch. Um, so you have that beautiful yellow, which is kind of goofy here, right? We've got like, maybe three quarters of an inch of a square inch here. And that little piece of material is everything, right? Like it's just a neat thing. Of course it's autographed. 
but it's just uh, aesthetically, it's just a very nice card altogether. And again, 2004 Tools of the Trade. Um, I'll probably, yeah, I'm going to show this trifecta altogether here. And I'm sorry that my cases are kind of scratched, you guys, but like, I, like I said, I'm going to swap them out at some point, uh, I think. But uh, so a lot of scratches you see, they actually will be. So uh, on the case itself. So take a look at this here. This is 2003, 2004, and 2005 Tops Retired Refractor on card autographs, all out of 25. Um, so the, the one that I remember getting, um, or I, I first saw, was this one right here. And I was so in love with this card, and my mother-in-law was actually over. So I was like, uh, she and my wife were talking in the living room, and I was there too, and I knew that the auction was counting down. And I just knew it, I knew it. And let me see if I'm, if I'm actually have this uh, focus here. And I felt my, my phone buzz and I opened up, I was like, sure enough, I lost. I'm like, oh no. Well, eventually I got my hands on it and it's my favorite, it's my favorite one, I think. Uh, it was for a long time and I think it is now uh, also of the three. Love the black border, love how it shines, love that he's in a gold jersey. Uh, I just think everything works so well. It's the 2004 version, again, at 25. They've got non-refractor versions of these as well. Uh, I eventually picked this up, and I think if I remember correctly, a friend of mine, Chad, who's actually uh, north of the border in Canada, um, he picked this up for me, and uh, this is one of the cards that I really regretted after I sold out that I missed out, that I, that I got rid of. So I was like, hey, Chad, can I do a trade back with you? Can I buy it off you and he was kind enough to say yes and uh so there it is so it's back now these two were tougher i think um at least the 2003 so 2005 is really pretty also just a very nice card um and rangers you know so that's you know not the same typical a's kind of deal or whatever which is great but you know it's really for me personally it's 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 between these two here uh that are my favorites uh and really but if you have these, then I probably would want this more. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's kind of funny how that works. But that's the trifecta right there. Uh, all incredible cards. But you look at this, just a stark blue sky. Um, I mean, it's just an incredible, incredible card. Let me take the case off of this just so I can see if it'll do better for you on screen. And just look at that. Just a, just a gorgeous, gorgeous card. It's beautiful. All three of them are beautiful, really. So, uh, speaking of John, um, I got this next card from him in a trade, uh, and uh, this is a, uh, you know, let, let me try to see what, what number this is, or what year this is, again, I think, good night, I want to use the camera to see if I can read it, because I'm too old, let's see if I can zoom in, does it say 2019, yeah, 2019 maybe? Got to be able to, let me see here. <laughs> These things are so small. Uh, so yeah, I think it's the 2018 actually. Uh, 2018 tops, clearly authentic. A um, little bit of story behind this. Uh, first of all, if you don't uh, have the regular version of this already, I highly recommend picking up uh, his most iconic tops card ever, his rookie cup card. Uh, you know, the first time you can actually pull a Jose Canseco tops baseball card from a pack, uh, which is really kind of a cool thing. And uh, and it's also the 2018 version of this um, clearly authentic. That's not the one of one. Uh, full color. It's just beautiful. It really is. Um, this is the one of one, and this uh, sepia. And the funny thing is, is like this just popped. I think like within the past half year or so, if I remember correctly, which is really amazing because um, you know 1987 tops. This is my first card that I ever pulled. Uh, the the actual base 1987 tops card. So having the one of one clearly authentic version is a big deal to me. Um, interestingly enough, in 2017 this is the first year I think they were doing clearly authentic. Where Canseco was in at least there was an 86 in there, and I overpaid on that thing and I sold it a loss eventually. And that's bounced around I think a few times for for big money, and we're talking like a, you know over four figures. Uh, so for me personally, if I had a choice between that one and this one, I'd go with this one. Um, just because A7 Tops is my jam as far as the Canseco card goes. Like it's, 
uh, it means a lot to me personally. Now, that might be different for you, and uh, if so, check out the 2017 Clearly Authentics. There are, I think the base 86s are numbered out of 135, and in both cases, the yeah, for A7, uh, like this one, and the A6, the, the regular ones might be more aesthetically pleasing to you um, than, than you know, the CPA, gold board, or whatever. So for me, uh, this is excellent. It doesn't get better than this for a clearly authentic card. And if I had to have one clear card in my collection, uh, you know, this might be it. So might be the one that I want to have that, uh, that distinction. So we've got some top loaders. So we have this, uh, Allen and Ginter out of 10. Um, it is a silk and I love that, uh, that picture. It's from the 89 tops release. I used to have the wood one of one of this and I wish I had that one back to you. Um, but it is a, a really cool card. Now I try to keep the specialty Alan Ginter cards at one a pop, but every now and then I might run into like a, another silk or, or metal or, you know, stained glass or whatever. So speaking of stained glass, very cool. Uh, let me, let me tell you kind of what year this is. It's 2017 Alan Ginter. Um, the silks typic the frame silks typically, typically are out of 10. Um, I think Jose's had probably four or five releases if you want to look for, uh, for them. They're really cool. Uh, that's what the back looks like again. Um, you know, just, uh, just a fun little parallel. I just, I think it's really neat. So stained glasses, I think the, I think it's just a rumored run, print run of like 20 or 25 or something, but it's kind of, you know, transparent there, which is neat. And just a really cool design. Um, just like really cool. I really like, really like these. I actually did a, uh, a rip card video a number of years ago where I actually showed how you could put like a flashlight up to them to see what was in there and not to scam anybody. I want to make people aware that that's a possibility of what you could do. Um, and yeah, some people were thankful for it. Others were like, Hey, you know, you're, you know, you're getting it to where all the you know scumbags out there can, uh, can try it. So yeah, I guess, you know, whatever, but <laughs> So these are all Pacifics. Uh, a lot of these, so, uh, these three, especially, first of all, you guys like, just look at the how beautiful they are together. Uh, they're not massive cards. Like this is a 95, and this is gonna be the cheapest one out of them, I think. Uh, I believe that's a 95, 95 Pacific. Um, I would highly recommend picking up that. It's just beautiful. Just a beautiful card. And these are probably more of my favorites. I love the purples and blues, 99 Pacific Prism and, not, and 2000 Pacific Prism. Uh, they have a number of different variations of these cards. And I used to have the rainbow for the most part of both of them. I think there's like an out of 10 that I was missing or something at some point, but uh, I've decided to forego all the others and just keep the blues and purples. And there's another blue in here that is the 99 and we'll show that. I'm actually gonna put these off to the side so that way I can kind of show the bling together. Um, just really neat, really, really neat. So going forward, we got some customs in here. So I won't spend too terribly much time on the customs, but this is a, this is a hybrid, hybrid custom. It's a uh, 2021 Allen & Ginter Super Fractor Mini and I actually have like this atomic frame that I created uh, for it to fit in. Um, just for fun, just to like kind of catch your eye even more. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I love how it, how it looks and everything. I think it's really cool. Uh, there's one of one. This is his first, uh, his first Super Fractor Mini. And I think it's actually at this point his only Super Fractor Mini. Rest assured in the future, there'll be more, but you know, this is his first. So really kind of a cool deal. Um, this is a metal. This is a 2018 Allen Ginter metal. And I think these are typically out of three. Uh, so some of them are numbered, some of them are not numbered, but, um, but yeah, I think all of the metals are out of three. And uh, you know, a lot of these will come out of rip cards, by the way, you guys. So you can do a magnet test. If you have a rip card, you can put like a magnet on it. And if it sticks, then you know you have a metal card. This is a nothing card really, but it's one of my favorite uh, inserts uh, just because it's clear and it's cheap. It's a, a Skybox Thunder 99 turbocharged. You probably get it for five or 10 bucks. Uh, 
definitely worth it for sure. Just a really cool card. I love what they would do in the 90s and 2000s. They just did such a great job on a lot of these cards. Some are really funky, but like just super neat. So 2003, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Tops Tribute, and it's a gold. It's out of 25, or out of 100, I'm sorry. Uh, really neat card. It's, I didn't do the, uh, I didn't take it out of the top loader into a new one because I wasn't really planning on having, you know, keeping this in my collection or anything because I had that 25 tribute with the autograph and the jersey. But, uh, but yeah, beautiful card. It really is. Really, really nice card. Let me put this back in the junky top loader here. We will keep going forward momentarily. Okay, so before I got the Donner's Crusades, I decided to make my own. And this is a custom that I created. Uh, it is a, as you see, the logo says Tanner Crusade Plus. Now the regular Crusades, they came in green, purple, and red. I decided to do a blue with him on the Blue Jays. And I also wanted to have a, a place for him to sign. So Jose actually signed that in red ink in his kitchen. <laughs> so the back says one of one. And if you look in the background, I included myself there, uh, which is kind of a fun, fun little Easter egg that you know some people might not know about. Um, also, uh, the number, another Easter egg, it's Tan Man Baseball Fan-13. So it's kind of a fun little... Fun little thing there. And here's another custom. Um, this is a uh, super patch. They uh, upper decked some of these, um, but I amped it up and made my made it my own basically as far as design goes. And uh, Jose actually wore this patch uh, in his backyard. So if you don't know about my story, then you know ask me and I will be happy to uh, get you a link. Uh, it's all that and what all went down and everything. So love the patch, love the card. Um, it's really cool. And, and the thing is that that really kind of propels me to do custom cards for Conseco, especially patch cards. Patch cards are like my favorite. Yeah, I love patch cards. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, there's not too many of them out there, to be honest with you. So here's another Alan Ginner. This is a wood. It's a wood mini Devil Rays. Uh, I used to have almost all of the wood mini Canseco cards that had ever been made. Um, this is the only one I have right now. Um, Devil Rays, I'd probably like to get my hands on an A's one at some point uh, instead. But uh, in any event, uh, it's one of one, um, really neat card. And I would, like I said, I, I love just the, the different types. Let me see if I can get the other one in here. See where it is. You see, so like, look at all these minis, like you have a metal super fractor stained glass silk wood like what a cool thing that alan ginter's doing and by the way people don't know this alan and ginter actually have the original set of baseball cards of alan ginter from 1888 uh, that's where tops got him it's not a tops didn't create alan ginter um tops you know took that name that's from the 19th century but um really cool stuff really really cool stuff all right so hey, there's a kevin mitchell 87 fleer update i don't know what that's doing here <laughs> so anyways uh here we go talk about a heavy hitter um this is a thunder uh, skybox thunder super rave it says his number is zero zero <laughs> so you look that up um kind of fun but uh this is at 25 um it's a 98 if i remember correctly and it's a big deal of the card anytime you have like serial number cards from 50 or lower uh from the 90s they're massive cards um so they go for several hundred dollars at least uh for the most part and speaking of massive cards uh this is one of the hardest cards to find in all of the 90s for conseco it's the 1999 flare tradition starting nine and it is numbered nine of nine now the fun thing about this is like, first of all, I don't really care too terribly much about this card because in pictures it's like, okay, it looks like a base card with like blue foil. The blue foil really does pop nicely. It looks very nice. The thing that's really exciting to me about this card, which is really kind of fun, is my wife uh, and I actually met 9999, September 9th, 1999. And this is a 99 
uh, we are starting nine and it's number nine of nine. So I kind of have that little, that little connection of uh, Holly and me in this card. So, and it's kind of fun also to think that like I was on a, a collecting hiatus for maybe, you know, 10 plus years. I didn't even know this was produced. I didn't know what a starting nine card was. But when I was trying to woo my wife to be, Fleer was uh, making cards like this <laughs> that I would fawn over, you know, decades later. <laughs> so really, really kind of neat. Um, so here's a Bowman's Best. Uh, oops. Uh, it's a super fracture I just dropped. Thankfully, it's in a holder. <laughs> so uh, here you go right here. Uh, one of one, of course, really neat. Maybe his only Blue Jay super fracture. Again, that could change down the road. Uh, you know, Tops makes all kinds of uh, cards and everything for sure. So, uh, but it's really cool because it, it's a takeoff of, I think, the 1998 uh, Bowman's Best uh, set, if I remember correctly. And just a really cool card. And I really like how there's so much Super Fractor material that's exposed. I'm kind of uh, persnickety when it comes to Super Fractors. Um, I want a lot of the gold circles uh, to show. There's even a little bit of a rainbow effect on there too, which is really kind of cool. So, uh, a neat card. There's no autograph parallel, so this is it. You know, as far as super factors go for this, so really neat card. Um, and then I have this also. This is an '88 Tops cloth experimental test. Uh, these cards are big. Uh, there's the rumor. Uh, from what I remember, um, I believe that Tops created 50 sheets of these and they're ordered to be destroyed or something. And you know how that goes. They don't always get destroyed. So uh, some of them made it out into the secondary market. And this is uh, got to be the most highly sought after card of the Bash Brothers ever, like period. And it's probably not even close. <laughs> it's by a long shot. Uh, and it's a big deal of a card. Um, this card, I think a... Uh, I, gosh, I, I don't remember what the sales data is, but I, I, if I were to guess, I think that this would be at least a thousand dollar card, uh, to go on eBay, um, in this condition as nice as it, as it is. So it's just a really, really cool card. Um, okay. So moving forward, here's another custom I did. Um, this is uh, similar to like an immaculate type of card, but I've got blue hollow foil and that wonderful 89 World Series patch. Now, obviously, this is not game used. This is a player-worn one, um, unlike the one from the 2003 Flare that I showed you a couple of videos ago that is game used, which is really cool. Um, in fact, we can almost line these up. So, which is really kind of fun, right? It's kind of neat. Uh, so. It's got part of the R showing on both, so you can almost do that. The difference is this is game used and this one is not. But I always, it's a fantasy card and it's player worn. Jose, you know, that guy right there, he wore, actually wore this in his backyard also for me. So uh, just a really, I really like the design, like the blue holographic foil. Uh, I think it's really cool. So, and here, is a 2017 Topps Museum black frame out of five. And it's got silver ink and it is gorgeous. This actually was a PSA 10. Um, and let me get it out of the case. Uh, it was a PSA 10, I cracked out of it um, just because I don't like PSA cases on my uh, Canseco stuff, but goodness gracious, it is beautiful. It's got a little bit of a smudge on the, on the front there. Um, I'll have to wipe it off, but uh, by me, it's really neat. I have the wood version, and uh, it is the wood one's really cool. Like I really like the wood one. Yeah, you know, I miss it. I've I've gotten another one back that kind of satisfies me, but it, it does satisfy me. It's uh, the one I have, the one that I have now, and the one that was wood like this. I'm not sure which one I like better. Um, they're both just super cool cards. <laughs> I just I really like them both. Uh, I miss that wood one though because. Uh, yeah, but because I can't have that one of one, uh, having this out of five, this does it because I don't really have any other black frame uh, Canseco cards. So this kind of satisfies that category, which is really neat. So, um, And here is, yeah, I don't really do buybacks. I've got probably 10 of them. Actually, I keep saying I don't do buybacks, but I probably got 10. And this is one of them because um, it's one of one. 
And I don't know if there's any A's game use buyback cards that Topps has done, uh, except for this one. Um, and you see it's not in the original Topps Archives case because I don't like the Topps Archives cases. So I wanted to you know, put in my own. And uh, that's what I did. So it's on card. It's just a really neat picture. I love this picture. Uh, this, if I remember correctly, this might be, and I, I think I probably, I might have to correct myself later, but this might be a game use card that might be the, the base version. It might be the first one that I actually traded for online, if I remember correctly, or maybe that's the gallery one. Yeah, scratch that. It's one or the other, but, um, you know, that I ever did online as far as trade goes, but uh, just a super cool card. Um, and this is, okay, so this is a 2002. So, you know, Jose probably tired, uh, retired like within a month or two uh, officially of this card actually being released. And then 2021, so nearly 20 years later, you know, they're, they get it back and they have Jose sign it and they stamp it one of one in the upper right-hand corner. So, uh, so here's a fun fact also while I'm talking about this. This is the uh, Donner's Recollection Collection. I think this is the first year that... Uh, that uh, Donners did this. It's 2002, if I recall correctly. I think it actually says it on the embossing. I think that's right. It's tough to read, um, but I think that's right. Anyways, uh, the fun thing is, is I picked this up, uh, and it was actually the first rated rookie Canseco card I had had in a couple of years. Like I actually didn't even have a rated rookie Canseco for a while, which is bizarre. Uh, but it's one of those cards where it's like, eh, hey, I'll always get another one at some point. It's not a big deal, right? Like, it's just a, but you know, I, but getting the buyback version, this is a big deal to me as far as buybacks go. Like, if you like buybacks, you probably want to have the Raider Rookie as the buyback because, like, that's the, the big daddy, right? I used to actually have one out of four, um, and they've done a handful of these types, and, and, the one of one, which is really cool also, I think popped a year or two ago. Um, so it's a neat card too, but this is out of 21. Um, so obviously it's going to be more affordable than those others. And, but you know, <laughs> because it's out of 21, it's still going to be pretty pricey, but it's a, it's just such a cool card. Really, really neat. I can't say that too much about, uh, about buybacks, you know, to be honest with you. So let's see here. Um, check this out. Here's a couple, a couple uh, jumbo customs I did. Again, uh, Jose wore these for me uh, in his backyard. The jumbo two tone hollow foil. You have the purple hollow foil and silver hollow foil. Hollow foil. Um, I was just talking to my family about this. The the Expos logo. I was always wondering why there is an ELB. Come to find out, it's supposed to either be EB for Expos Baseball or 3 dm for Montreal. So, um, yeah, and there's White Sox. Gold Hall of Foil, Jumbo Patch. I love this. Super cool. I know the card companies aren't going to make anything that elaborate. So, uh, this, I'm probably going to have to look this up. But I mean, my goodness, guys, like the etching, the Starburst etching. This is a 1997, uh, and it is a reserved collection uh, for score. And it's tough. It's very condition sensitive, by the way, because it's a foil card, of course. Uh, but it's just very, very classy looking. And it's hard to find. Uh, and yeah, it's going to be pricey once, once they come up. They do show up every now and then, but yeah, it's a pricey card. And uh, stop me if you heard this before. Um, I don't normally do buybacks. So this is, uh, this is really kind of the Topps Archives uh, signature series buyback that I kept from my original collection. I had well over 100 buybacks, by the way, like Topps actually is featured in the you know, Topps website and everything of, of what I had. Um, but this is the sole uh, survivor as far as buybacks go for my original collection because it's the only refractor uh, from his playing career that I've seen ever in a buyback. Uh, so, and it's one of one, and it's just so neat. They did a uh, 2018 buyback refractor, if I remember correctly. I think one of my friends got it, um, and it's a beautiful card. 
it's just I don't understand why Tops does that, man. Like, why do they do buybacks for like cards that are like just a couple years old? That makes sense to me. But um, anyways, this is a '96, I think, or '97. Um, then yeah, '97, I guess. But uh, playing career, that's that's kind of where it's at for me. But um, yeah, just a neat, neat Red Sox card. I really like this. The lightning in the background, and everything is super cool. Um, and this is really interesting. This is a 1986 Donruss Highlights. Um, and uh, this is actually a blank back, which is really cool. I've only you know heard of one other of them. Um, so it's, and, and there's a white letter version of this too, you guys. Um, I've seen significantly more of those than the blank back. So this is kind of a neat one to, uh, you know, neat one to have. Um, just hadn't seen, <laughs> hadn't seen it before. So other than one other time. Um, so we're about to, and we got eh, maybe about a fourth more of these to go. So here's another custom. This is a wood triple threads patch. Um, Canseco didn't have, uh, any, uh, scratch on the case. Canseco didn't have any triple threads patch cards and still doesn't. He does have their wood. Um, he does have a wood, uh, four wood, one of ones now. But there's no patches, just like bat pieces. So like wood on wood. And and I have the one that I want, but uh, which is actually in my top 25, I think, right now. But this card, and you see this also, it says Tanner's Threads. <laughs> I love doing that that sort of thing. Um, I uh, had Jose sign a sticker uh, for customs I did afterwards, um, after I left his house. And so that's where one of them went. Uh, it says Franchise Favorite. Good take, of course. And it's all wood. So... Really kind of a kind of a fun thing there. I really like that. Um, oh, it even says the autograph was obtained at the same time as well. Oh, it says the enclosed jersey pieces are from a jersey personally worn by Jose Canseco at his residence. Uh, the autograph was obtained at the same time as well on May sixteenth, two thousand fifteen. Which you guys like that was nine years ago. I can't believe how much time has passed. Um, so this is a ninety nine. Skybox PMG, Precious Metal Gems, and oh my goodness, beautiful card. Beautiful, beautiful card. I like the embossing in the background. I like the 98 better, um, you know, quite a bit better, but this, uh, you know, this is an incredible card. I really like how it looks. It's out of 50, so it's not impossible, but they do go for, for good money, so. And then this is a, it's actually a duplicate of one of my cards that's in my top 25, but it's a 2000 Upper Deck Game Jersey patch. It's the first uh, patch release that Jose had, first patch release for many players, because I think it was actually the first uh, uh, pack pulled patch release, if I remember correctly, it was 2000, but um, one in 10,000 packs. And the thing that I am grateful for Jose, which is kind of goofy, say for Jose to have been on Devil Rays is the amazing ribbing on the patches. Like, just look at that. It's kind of mesmerizing. And I always wanted one that's kind of like got the green to, to yellow. But if I'm ultimately, if I'm keeping just one 2000 Upper Deck Game Jersey patch, uh, this is not the one that I'm keeping with as awesome as it is. Um, I'm actually keeping the other one I have. And if I do a top 25 video, I will show you what it is. And if you followed me on social media, no doubt you've seen it a billion times because so, I love it so much. Uh, this one I picked up uh, from a guy that uh, actually bought his collection. Um, but he actually uh, had this also. So years later, he posted on eBay, which was, oh, maybe three, four, five, six months ago. So I picked this one up because he uh, was asking a very reasonable price for it. It's at 25 is an all-time fan favorites um 2005 it's not my favorite um card for sure um but it was just reasonably priced so yeah, it's one of those that never really shows up um this is the only again this is two reasons or two things that make this special uh it's a one of one leaf dual autograph of the bash brothers uh and the cool thing about this this version is the background is an elephant ear and you know obviously the a's have the elephant as a mascot which is, is really cool. So um, I picked this up not because I'm madly in love with the, you know, with Lee for the dual autographs of Kinseko McGuire 
on leaf cards rubber because they've done so many of them. Um, you know, but it is one of one, uh, and it's just a really neat card and it was reasonably priced. So I think probably eventually I'll, you know, trade it or do something with it, but, but for now I'm not, you know, I have it. So, okay. No, oh, this is a double that eventually will, and it's in its tops thing. So I'm going to do something with that eventually. Cause I don't really do doubles 2005, uh, sweet spot, sweet sticks. Uh, sweet stick signatures, really, really cool. It's numbered out 35. I think it's for 2005, if I remember correctly. Um, I think one's for sale on eBay right now, or, or one just sold. I don't know, but they're, they're fairly difficult to come by, but they do show up. Um, so if you miss out on one, you know, there's, you know there, there'll be others that pop up. Here is a custom. Uh, it is a game used ball, and I just think this is really neat like i love how everything turned out on this one so very very cool it says custom card one of one because you know i did it and this here you guys like this is kind of a fun one years and years ago i uh, i found out about somebody that had some fleer ultra boardroom prototypes and what that means is some of the designers pitched uh various designs to uh the executives or whatever and they they uh, pasted them on a board to see which way they were going to go this was one of the versions that they tried to do and i ended up buying the panel from somebody from freedom cardboard back in probably 2015 16 17 something like that and i was so pumped i ended up selling um i think probably in 2018 or so and about a year or two somebody else and i thought that was it i was like i'm never going to see those again <laughs> uh back in like yeah like i said a year or two ago somebody had another panel and jose was on it now there were unlike the other panel that i got from somebody from freedom cardboard this panel also had a greg maddox and i think a no-name player but the interesting thing about the panel was uh the other two cards i think had almost had like drawings and coloring on it and everything so they, it's like they're trying to figure out which way to go with certain designs and everything so i don't know if this was like the earliest uh test that they did but in any event this is not how 92 flare ultra looks like but this is in fact an authentic boardroom prototype uh, i actually i think if i remember correctly i think the board that I had a year or two ago had one extra of these or two extra of these or something. I've sold or traded them um, away, no doubt, to one of my friends. I think it's either John or Mark or something that has, has one or maybe both of them do. But, you know, this is the one that I kept and I'm very happy. I'm very, very happy I have, have this back because it's one of those where it's like, oh, I wish I didn't sell that, you know. But anyway, so moving forward, almost done here. This is an Upper Deck Authentics. Um, I think I got this from Curtis uh, recently because I think this is like one of the only ones I cared about as far as Upper Deck serial numbered stuff, uh, hand numbered stuff that I didn't already have. Uh, so it's out of 25, it's a very tough card. It's a 96 Select Certified Mirror Red. Print run of 90, highly sought after set. Um, I'm looking for the blue, so if you have a blue out there, let me know. Beautiful card. It's another one I didn't, I wasn't really wild about it, but it is a neat card. It's a uh, 2000 Crown Royale proof. It's out of 50. It, it's die cut and you can see through it. So there's a lot of things that are going, uh, that, that, you know, that's going for it. So it's, it is a neat card. Um, and same thing with this. It's not a massive card, but it's collector's choice. Nice seven, um, touch them all foil parallel, which is a cool card there. So this is a re recollection collection. I bought this because I got this super cheap. Like I think it's like, I think I ended up paying 125 bucks or something for it recently. Uh, that's a steal for this card. It's numbered out of 18. Um, and, or if you turn it that way, you can say it's like almost like 81 out of 90, <laughs> but, uh, but no, it's, it's out of 18. And I don't know if I've ever seen this card before. So this is a big deal of a card. It's just not for my collection really. 
but I had to pick it up because it is a, is a good deal. I could you know, trade that. So um, here is a 99 uh, Bowman Chrome International Refractor. It's out of 100. And in the first video that I showed you guys, I showed a, um, if I remember correctly, a uh, the gold out of 25, which is a massive card. But this to me just looks so much cooler. <laughs> so if you want one of them, uh, you're probably not ever going to see that out of 25 again, or you might if you're like watching like a hawk on eBay. Uh, this one does show up every now and then. It is tough to come by, you know, because there's only 100 of them and there's a lot more people out there that want it, but way more accessible than that out of 25. Because at one point I used to have three of these and I've only seen uh, that Bowman, the uh, out of 25, I've never seen that one before uh, with the number if I remember correctly. So. Here's a couple mini customs I did for Christmas uh, about a year or so ago. Canseco Claus, Seva Bat, he's got a candy cane. <laughs> yep, you guys, I'm that big of a dork. And of course we aged him on this one. This is the stuff I do, you guys like, you know, so you think you're a super collector. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, there you go. So I, I even did a snow globe with this, which is really fun. I actually have it on my desk, so. And let's see. Oh, a few more cards, a few more cards. Okay, so this one's really cool. Uh, this is a Flawless, it's out of five, and it's a nameplate. Uh, so that's uh, presumably a, in the O, I guess, on, on the back of jersey, his jersey. The neat thing is, you guys, there's, and I didn't care about this card too terribly much until I did some research. And as it turns out, it looks like the jersey that Panini used for this was the actual jersey that Jose was wearing while he, number one, pitched back in 93 um, and had to get Tommy John surgery later and the time that ball bounced off his head. Um, so just adds way more historical significance. So, so we could probably safely assume that if you get a Panini card of like Immaculate or uh, Flawless or whatever that's got a jersey, a gray jersey, um, you could probably reasonably assume that it's from when he actually had the ball bounce off his head for a home run, um, which is really, really cool. So just a fun little piece uh, piece there. So um, now we are going for, wait, I'll just do some of these here. So for the longest time, I couldn't find this one. I ended up getting one that had like a very faded autograph. I don't even think you could see the autograph on it, but uh, but this one, beautiful autograph. I think it's a double, so eventually I'm probably going to trade the other one. Um, and here is a beautiful bat barrel. So shout out to Mario uh, on Twitter. Uh, so he actually told me about this card. So thank you, Mario. I appreciate that very much. Uh, really, really cool card. Um, it's got the nice little Rawlings there. And, you know, it's like, it just my goodness, like how many times... How many home runs did Jose uh, hit with this bat, right? So cool. It's one of the cards that, the bat barrel is one of the cards I was thinking, okay, I'll probably have a non-autograph and an autograph. I think I probably started out by saying I would just have one barrel. Well, I think I probably have like four or five barrels now, and I don't really I didn't mean to stockpile them or whatever, but you know, it's hard to say now when you see them. So uh, this card is uh, um, sneaky hard. It's credits. Uh, I don't think I saw it ever while well, I was super collecting this number out of 100. Presumably this was out of a retail box where maybe uh, was only offered in Walgreens or something. I think as football season came in, they probably threw out the others. Apologies for the sounds and backgrounds of the dishwasher. But, uh, but anyway, so this popped up recently and I just picked it up just because I didn't have it before. And I was thinking, why not? And this uh, very, very difficult card. So is it serial number out of 100? Yes. Uh, are there a hundred out there? Almost certainly no. Um, you know, there might be, you know, a tenth of those or something. I don't know. Uh, so this is a fun one also. This is a 2002 Upper Deck. Uh, I think they call it Authentics. Uh, it's 2002. This is the reverse negative. So he looks like a lefty there. Very difficult to find. Had to pick this up again. I've had it in the past a few times, but uh, this is one of the cards I just wanted to get back and I recently got it back. I'm very happy to have it back in my collection. This is a, uh, sweet spot classic Yankee greats. Uh, it's out of 25. 
Um, again, just a really cool card. Um, and uh, yeah. And fun fact, these aren't actual baseballs that Sweet Spot used. They, I think they manufactured flats and because they'll wrinkle typically um, if you do that. Trust me, I've done a number of baseballs, <laughs> baseball uh, custom cards to know that. So uh, I will show two more cards, I think. Okay, so which one should I show you first? Well, I'll show you this one. Okay, warning shot. So you remember that time when Jose actually uh, shot his finger off? Well, uh, my buddy bought the gun and the bullets that were inside of, you know, that he actually shot his finger with the gun. The bullets were still in and this is one of them. I created three of them, one for me, one for Edward, uh, my friend Edward that actually bought the gun and then one for our friend Mark. And so you see, I have two of three here. It says authentic bullet. This is quite literally um, was in the gun itself when Jose shot his finger. And so I've got a really cool video on YouTube. Uh, Edward went to get the three that I posted, uh, that I created for us signed. And Jose loved these cards. He went nuts. And he had a bunch of nice things to say about me also, which is really fun. So check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Tamman Baseball Fan. Wait a second. If you're watching this, you're probably seeing it on you, on my YouTube channel. So scratch that. Okay, so last but not least, we're going to show this. This is a hybrid custom. So this is out of five National Treasure. And this is a big deal. You guys, like back in the day, like 2015, National Treasures did five clear signature cards where it's just the signatures and they're on like clear acetate and five patch cards where it was just the patch of both of them. A big deal for any Bash Brother fan, right? Well, the problem was, was Panini on, I think all five of them, uh, took McGuire's autograph and reversed it. So it kinda, kinda, you know, foiled it for everybody, right? Well, what I did was, first of all, I, I, I'm, I'm a patch guy first and foremost, way more than signatures. I love patches so much more. Uh, but what I did was I took a patch card, a real patch card out of, out of five from Panini, and I ended up buying other products that had Canseco and McGuire sign on acetate, uh, other Panini products, the real Panini cards. I took out the acetate and I slid them in the relic area so they lay right on top of the patches. So I have my own little kind of hybrid custom bash brother booklet and it's just really it's a really neat one i'm actually going to pull it out here just so you can see um because you know it looks like it's it looks completely like it's from the factory um which is really kind of a fun thing so there's the five out five probably won't see any five five of fives or out of five booklets like this uh patch or, or signatures or anything on ebay anytime soon but Anyways, because it's a landmark card, but anyways, that's, that was my way of amping it up for my own collection. So, and I think I actually ended up selling this to somebody and bought it back like years later. So, <laughs> it's so kind of funny. That's 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 my ammo, I guess. So, that does it for this box. Um, I have uh, another box that I will go through, and there's like probably even cooler stuff in there, and then I might do that top twenty-five. So, thank you as always for watching. I hope you all have a great rest of the day.